Hello, Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. Myself, Mohamed Ayadul Islam and today I am going to present an intelligent system for hearing deficiency diagnosis using EG-based AP signal, CWT and improved vision 16 pipeline. The co-inventors are Dr. Norijam bin Sulaiman, Dr. Mahapuja Binti Mustafa, Mamun Roshid and Dr. Moab Shaul bin Jedi. Let's begin. Let's look at the background of my research. As people move through in their daily living activities, basic auditory abilities play a vital role for their communication and their learning capabilities. But the World Health Organization who report that 466 million people are living with the hearing loss in 2018 and projected to exceed 630 million by the year of 2030 and more than 900 million by the year of 2050. One of the best way to meet this vast population concern is to use the brain-computer interface which links the human brain to the external technology. There are some basic problems that I found when I am trying to implement this analysis. The conventional hearing disorder uh, diagnosis technique are time-consuming since most of the approach select a long distance window. Among the wide range of feature instruction methods, it is very challenging to figure out the most effective approach. To classify the instructive feature, the researchers have developed different types of machine learning and deep learning techniques. But determining the most appropriate approach to classify the AP signal remains challenging. The main objective of this study is to build an intelligent system for hearing deficiency diagnosis. To meet this objective, the sub-objective are to investigate the EEG features that are related to the human hearing disorder to develop a hearing disorder recognition model using the deep learning technique, to conduct a performance analysis on the model using AP dataset. This figure shows the data acquisition procedure. First, we select the subject. Then we select the suitable equipment from which we can collect the AP dataset. In this study, we have used the five-channel emotive insight uh, device. Then we connect the device with computer using the emotive pro software via Bluetooth. During the data collection, we check the conduct quality and if the conduct quality is less than 100%, then we use the conductive gel which helps to increase the conduct quality between the skin and the sensor. Finally, we record and export the AP dataset. In this study, uh, the electrode were placed at F3, F4, T7 and T8 following the international 1020 system. The first figure shows the raw data plotting of when the subject cannot hear the auditory stimulus and the second figure shows the raw data plotting of when the subject able to hear the auditory stimulus. From each subject, we collect the multiple trial and each trial contains the data of 40 seconds. From each trial, we cut the first 5 second uh, data and achieve the 35 second data. The sampling frequency of this device is 128 hertz. Based on the sampling frequency, we segmented the data set into two decision window, one second and two second. Each subject are provided 60 to 80 decibel auditory stimulus through the headphone. This figure shows the transformation process from time domain signal to time frequency domain image using CWT. In this study, we have used the mother wavelet and it has the two properties. First one is scaling property and the second one is shifting property. Based on this property, we collect the coefficient to build the time frequency image. This figure shows the architecture of the proposed improved VG16 model. It consists of input layer, multiple convolutional layer, max pooling layer, multiple dense layer, and the fully connected layer. This table illustrates the proposed architecture building and training procedure. In the first step, we load the base VG16 model with the pretend weight. And in the second step, we freeze some layer in the base V16 model. The red dotted area of this figure shows the working of step 2. In this area, the weight will not update with the time frequency image. This area just transfer their weight to the next layer. In the third step, we create the model by replacing some layer of V16 model with the new layer and retain this layer. The blue dotted area shows the working of step 3. In this area, the weight will update with the time frequency image. In this area, we also change some layer of base v 16 model. Here I use the multiple dense and the dropout layer. The reason behind adding the dropout layer is to prevent the overfitting problem. There are several key benefits of the proposed architecture. The proposed architecture provides the 
faster training process since it uses the less parameter than the base V16 model. We also change some higher level parameter and fit the, our data set with the proposed architecture. This architecture achieved the state of art performance with the concise decision window. In this study, we have also designed a graphical user interface. Here, to show the model performance, we shuffle the data set, testing data set in a manner that if we put the odd number, then it call the unlabeled data when the subject is able to hear the auditory stimulus. And if we put the even number, then it call the unlabeled data when the subject cannot able to hear the auditory stimulus. The first figure shows the comparison between the base V16 model and the improved V16 model. To show the effectiveness of the improved V16 model, we calculate the different performance evaluation technique. From this figure, we can see that our improved V16 model achieved the much better result with the time frequency AP signal. From the confusion matrix, we can see that among the 899 observations, only one observation has been misclassified. To show the effectiveness of the proposed improved V16 model, we also conduct the different experiment analysis. From this table, we can see that our proposed architecture achieved 2.09% improvement in accuracy than the first experiment analysis. And the proposed architecture achieved 0.26% improvement in accuracy than the second experiment analysis. Hearing loss is the most prevalent sensory disability in the world and it's impeding the human communication and their learning capabilities. So a reliable and effective hearing test is essential for addressing this issue from the earlier stage. In this study, several experiments have been conducted to figure out the most appropriate approach for hearing deficiency diagnosis. The experiment analysis has conducted with the experimental data set where the proposed architecture achieve a maximum of 99.89% testing accuracy. We also develop a graphical user interface with the improved V16 model, which is user friendly and easy to operate. People can easily operate this system, test their hearing condition in the initial stage and be aware about their condition. The proposed uh, approach has achieved a state of art performance compared to the related existing study, which may significantly accelerate the achievement of our goal. In this slide, I have shared one of my recent publications where I have used the proposed improved VD16 model with the publicly available data set for detecting the hearing condition and we achieve a state of art performance with this approach. Here I mention some of my journal article and the conference paper. Thank you everyone for listening to my presentation.